In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. How many nights in your life have you wrestled? How many days? How alone were you, and with whom have you wrestled? Now, before examining these questions about our own lives, let's look more closely at the story of Jacob. Jacob is Isaac's second son. He's the one who is a pretty sharp operator, who takes advantage of his brother Esau's impetuosity and tricks Esau out of his father's blessing. Jacob ends up fleeing, and after many years of life apart, life during which he also succeeds in cheating his father-in-law, he now flees again. And in the context of this flight, Jacob has entered into the territory of his brother Esau, and he's worried. He's convinced that all of the years must be years of grudge, and that Esau will destroy him. So he sends presents and messengers of appeasement ahead of him. Finally, he sends his family and his goods to greater safety and stays alone to await what will happen. And what happens is that in the darkness, an unknown man wrestles with him. All night, the two wrestle with neither prevailing until the unknown man puts Jacob's hip out of joint. Still, Jacob clings to the man, stating that he will not release his grip until the man blesses him. In order to give the blessing, the man asks Jacob's name and then renames him. He renames him Israel, the one who has struggled with God. The man, now known to be God, departs, and Jacob is left with a limp, lamed, wrestling, will wear you out. Whether or not actual lameness results, the struggle itself is wearing, so why would we wrestle? Why would we wrestle with God? St. Paul instructs us to persist in the faith, whether the times are favorable or unfavorable. Jesus instructs that we are to persist in prayer, to petition day in and day out in the ongoing struggle of faith, and Luke tells us that Jesus provides this instruction as one about the need to pray, not to lose heart. Let's look back at Jacob. At any time in the night, he could have just quit. He didn't. Because of who God called him to be when God made a covenant with him saying, I am the Lord and by you and your descendants shall all the families of the earth bless themselves. Jacob did not quit because of who he was called to be, and each one of us is both called and equipped to be the person God calls us to be, to be the person by whom God will affect his blessings in this world. Jacob did not quit because in the verses omitted from our lesson, which came immediately before the struggle in the night, he prayed to God, reminding God of the promises of descendants and blessing. And we struggle like Jacob. We know that wrestling is not just about us, even if most of the wrestling we do is done when we're alone. We struggle because like Jacob, we pray. It's kind of an interesting contrast we get in our lessons. In the case of Jacob and that of Timothy, the focus is uh, on how the protagonist struggles or is to persist in struggle because of how God will use him to bring blessing to others. In the Psalm, we're reminded that it is God who watches over us. And the words of the psalm echo our own petition to God, a petition that Jesus teaches we are to persist in. Jesus assures his disciples that God will answer their prayers and then in effect challenges his disciples when he closes this teaching with the words, and yet 
When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Will he find faith? Will we persist in the struggle? To examine these questions, let's go back to the ones I posed at the beginning of this sermon about how often, how long we struggle, with whom, and whether we struggle alone. No matter how persistent we are in prayer, times of struggle arise when we are alone and wonder whether what we are doing makes any difference. There are times when the words of scripture, or certainly of a sermon, will go in one ear and out the other because we're focused elsewhere, usually on ourselves, on our own problems, like Jacob. Jacob is focused elsewhere, even though he's just prayed to remind God of all his promises. He's focused elsewhere. He's worried about what Esau will do. He's divided his family, his flocks and goods, and is sitting there wondering if what he has done is going to help. Jacob is not in the night thinking about the promises God has made. He's worried about Esau. And so he doesn't put the dots together to say something like, God has made a promise to me. God keeps his promises. His promises involve a future for me, even though he just prayed that. Even though he just prayed that, and then what happens? God shows up and makes him wrestle wrestle with the intersection of his fears and his prayers, wrestle all night until he realizes who it is that he struggles with. Jacob struggles with the one who made the promise to him. He struggles because he doesn't know with whom it is that he struggles, and we struggle. We struggle with what we call conscience or the unknown, or a fear that we cannot name. Like Jacob, we may struggle because we are afraid, because we are alone, and even if we pray the promises has God, of, that God has made to each one of us, we often live like we don't experience these promises. Promises like, I am with you always to the end of the age, or where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Promises like, the one who believes and is baptized will be saved, or for God sent his son into the world that the world might be saved through him. We struggle, and God lets us struggle. He doesn't just defeat Jacob, although he can. He doesn't just defeat Jacob because it is in the struggle that Jacob is bound intimately to God. We struggle, but in a crucial way, our struggle is different from that of Jacob, for we are given each other with whom to face conscience, the unknown, the doubts, the fears. We are given each other to together be intimately bound to God. I remember a young woman who struggled mightily with the disease which claimed her earthly life. She was scared. She was worn out. She wasn't experiencing a remission of her disease despite much prayer, and she wrestled therefore with God. She wrestled and said, I can't pray, which is just like Jacob silently thinking in the night. I can't trust. What she heard from the church was not an exhortation to greater prayer, to greater faith, but the words of a minister of the gospel who said, that's why we're here, all of us. When you can't pray, because you can't pray, we'll pray for you. No one of us is alone in our struggle. When you can't pray, there are others around you who pray not just for you in the sense of lifting you up to God, but in the sense of lifting Godward the prayers that you cannot voice, that you struggle to name. 
Your doubts are borne by those around you because God has appointed that we gather. We gather sure of Jesus' promise that when we do so, he comes to us. We gather in the certainty that each one of us has been appointed to incarnate Christ to another, especially when that other feels oh so alone, oh so filled with doubt and fear. Like Jacob, we may limp along, but as we do, we can, like the psalmist, lift up our eyes. That the eyes of those who hang their heads in loneliness, loneliness will experience that those who surround them lift their eyes, that those around them gather and pray, that those around them then lift them up. When you struggle, Know that you never struggle alone. You have been appointed by God to lift up those around you. Each of those with whom you gather has been appointed by God to lift you up. We have been appointed and equipped each to each to keep on praying, to persist in struggle, that when the Son of Man comes, he will find faith, not only in his church, but in all those who have been washed in his blood, cleansed by his spirit. We pray to lift up and make real to each other again all of God's promises. We pray for those who have not or will not pray for themselves that by the direction of our own uplifted eyes, they may then turn to trust and experience that all help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Amen. <laughs>